you into photography? I don't know where I just put it. Um, you sound oh, well, good right there. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, so anyway, I basically I worked in mental health, mm -hmm. and uh, I got really interested in the history of the state hospitals. And uh, the more I read about them, uh, you know, the more interested I became in the asylums and and uh, you know other facilities like that. And there was one in Philadelphia called um, Philadelphia State Hospital or Library. Um, and so basically, I I decided that uh, this place had been closed for about ten years. And after reading a whole bunch about it, I decided that I wanted to go there and, and photograph it. And or I'm sorry, actually, just see it at that point because I wasn't a photographer. So. I mean, basically, the, you know, kind of condensed version of that story is just that I went, I, you know, checked it out, and it was really kind of a transformative um, experience for me, and then I tried to tell people about it and explain why it was so meaningful to me, and, you know, like, nobody really gets it. Mm -hmm. um, so, gradually, I sort of got interested in photography as a way of communicating what it was about the places that I felt was really special and important. So I was never really a photographer to begin with. It was just something that I did because I, I thought the buildings were so interesting. And, and you know, uh, again, I mean, you can tell people about a place, but uh, it doesn't really communicate it very well sometimes. Yeah. And when did you know that you wanted to make a career out of photographing uh, abandoned places? Um, well, I, that's a good question. I mean... I think it's something that I just got really obsessed with and started to do all the time. And uh, it was about, I think it was about 2010 that um, I had just kind of had it with working in mental health. Um, I'd been working in mental health at that point for close to 10 years. So just kind of tired of it and uh, decided to go back to school for a master's in photography. And then after that, it was like, you know, either keep going with it or uh, go back to mental health, which I really didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. And then what led you to creating a book about your abandoned discovery? I think, you know, I think like my website initially was a collection. I mean, I, I've had that since, gosh, I'm coming up on 12 years with the website. Um, and the whole idea, I guess, was almost like, sort of chapters of each place, like galleries, you know, and things that tell you a little bit about each one. So, I mean, I think that was always kind of naturally something that I guess I, I thought of as, as sort of a, a, a book or collection. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it, I would definitely say that the further I got into it, the more that just seemed like kind of a natural thing to do with it. Um, so I don't know if there was – like a moment that I was like, this, you know, needs to be a book. It was more just like, you know, what's what's the next step for having all of this stuff on my website? And what do I do with it next? Mm -hmm. And then, what do you think is the importance of documenting your discoveries in book form? Well, that's 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 a good question too. I mean, I think you know that's kind of like a a, a two part thing, I guess maybe, right? Because mm -hmm. On one hand, you have, you know, the question about what's the importance of it in general and then, you know, wide book form. Um, in general, I think it's important to document these places because it's just such a huge change that's occurring in terms of architecture and, and destruction of buildings, really. I mean, um, I think, first of all, the, you know, kind of the collapse of um, industry has been something that's been going on my whole life. Um, but you know, that kind of shockwave effect where you have towns that don't, you know, where they're losing their big factories and they can't afford to keep up their schools or, you know, the churches are closing because they don't have the same workers in the area anymore, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, looking at that on a larger level, that's enormous. And, and I mean, there were a lot of uh, buildings that were destroyed in the urban renewal period in like the 60s and 70s. Um, and I think this is kind of a version of that. So, I mean, on one hand, you know, there's the general interest, I think, just in seeing abandoned places and, and um, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, just the sort of romance of ruins, I guess. But on the other hand, it's, it's 
sort of a really important part of the time that we're in right now, right? Yeah. And so, I mean, I guess to get to why in a book, um, you know, the website, I think, you know, the website is something that I've worked on for a really long time, and it's been a really big project and a huge part of my life. Mm-hmm. But websites are also kind of transient themselves, you know. I mean, um, you, you never really know how long they're going to stick around or whether they're going to outlast you or whatnot. And, you know, theoretically, a book will, hopefully. Um, what camera do you prefer to use? Right now, I use a Sony A7R2, and before that, I used a Canon 5D Mark II. Um, What do your friends and family think of your um, profession? (laughs) Um, Well, I mean, that's kind of funny because I I guess, you know, when I first started doing it, first of all, like, I got got into this really in, like, around Mm -hmm. 2001-ish. 2000. And at that point, I mean, you know, I, I'm by no means like the person that invented this, you know. Um, there have been people that have been documenting ruins for centuries, but I think, you know, the current climate of like you know, Instagram and stuff like that, where photographing ruins has just really blown up in popularity and become a lot more of, I guess, I don't know, a cultural phenomenon really wasn't there then, you know? Yeah. So people, um, I think, thought it was really kind of weird um, and were maybe a little, like, amused by it. Um, but, you know, my family and friends were always very supportive of me through it. And, um, you know, they, they're concerned about my safety, obviously. Yeah. But you know, it was never, like... People are like, that's that's a dumb idea. You shouldn't do that. Um, I'm very, like I said, very lucky in that sense that just, you know, my family has always kind of backed me in that. And then I think later as, you know, it's something where I book out or, you know, people are, I guess, a little more, like, aware of the work that I do. Because, I mean, really, you know, like, I, I would be perfectly upfront about this. This whole thing was kind of like, um, you know, me being a bit of an introvert. And, um, you know, being most comfortable being by myself in some ways in, in these places. So, I mean, it's kind of weird to me sometimes that people have, like, you know, when somebody will say, oh, I heard of your book, or even, even you know, here where you're like, uh, you know, I'd like to ask you a few questions about it. You know, there's this part of me that's like, well, what, what, why do you even care what I think about things? You know what I mean? Um but uh, I, I don't mean that in a bad way or anything. It's just, you know, it's it's odd. It's an odd uh, thing when you do something because it's just kind of like your weird nerd obsession, uh, you know. But anyway, uh, you know, kind of getting back to the family and friends thing, I think that, you know, now it's like I think I think people are kind of like, you know, maybe proud that I've, I've been somewhat successful in that. I mean, to me, I, I don't really – um, I don't really see that as much because I only ever see kind of what I don't get done and what I have left to do. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that I mean, it's a very long answer to your question, but <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> um, so it's good to have a support system. Yeah. Um, okay. So, is there a place that you would like to go photograph that you haven't got a chance to yet? Oh, <laughs> thousands, thousands of them. <laughs> what um, would be like your number one? My number one. Oh gosh, I mean, uh, you know, like by country, by time period. You know, um, I would, I would really like to. Um, I think part of what got me interested in this was being really interested in archaeology and history too. Um, and not having maybe the money to go and see, like, World Heritage sites. Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, there are all sorts of places around the world, ruins and, uh, you know, places like Petra or Machu Picchu or um, Angkor Wat in Cambodia or, uh, you know, that's, I mean, a lot. But then then there's a lot more sort of contemporary ruins, too, like uh, um, 
you know, Chernobyl is one of the places that I'd like to go um, at some point in my life. I'd like to see Fukushima, actually, although, you know, it's not uh, terribly safe to go there. Um, you know, and it's not, I mean, it isn't so much like this, uh, you know, for me, I don't, I don't think it's like, oh, look, I want to see the, you know, I think you have to be really careful when you do this stuff that you're not just like kind of a morbid tourist, you know, yeah. uh, going around and other people's disasters, you know, but I mean, I think that each of those things represent something that's really important about our time too. So, um, yeah, I mean, I could, as long as, as much time as you had, I can fill it with places that I either would have liked to have seen that are gone or um, I'm still hoping to get to. Yeah. Okay. So what do you like to what do you like to do on your free time when you're not photographing? <laughs> um I'm trying to figure that out. Uh that's <laughs> that's a good question. Cuz I mean um you know like when you do something that is kind of like your escape from the world and then it becomes what you do for work. Um I think and I'm lucky in that sense. Like I, I don't I don't mean to uh, ever sound like I take that for granted, but it comes with its own cost, and the cost is that um, what you love becomes your work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, like you, uh, you have to find new things to do to get away from work because your work is now the thing that you did to get away from work. Um, so, I mean, in that sense, uh, you know, I, I love. Uh, I love travel, um, just, you know, like, boring things like, uh, like, I like cooking. <laughs> I like know? cooking, too. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, reading, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big uh, bookworm. Um, you know, I would say travel, cooking, reading, those are probably my favorite things. Oh, um, and, and museums, I love going to, uh, like, art museums and things like that. What's your favorite art museum? Well, of the ones that I've gone to so far, and, and bearing in mind that this is something that was kind of like in the last year, I sort of started to be like, hey, I really should just go out and do this wherever I go because yeah. I actually really like this a lot. I mean, I knew I liked art before, but don't ask me why. It, it was kind of, uh, you know, something where it was like, oh, hey, as an adult, I can go to these places just for fun, you know, because mm-hmm. I like them. Um, and so I would say at this point, like the, the Met, uh, the Metropolitan Museum in New York City, I've been, I've been going there a bit recently and they have this really great, like, uh, Egyptian section, um, which again, you know, kind of like the ancient ruins is, is very appealing to me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would say, I would say of the ones that I've been to, that's, that's probably my favorite thus far. When I was in New York, I don't think I went there, but I'm going next year, so I'll need to stop by. Yeah, I mean the Met is absolutely worth it. I've I've gone there several times now, and every time I go, I spend like hours there. And then when I leave, I'm like, oh my god, there's still a whole other huge part of this mu- huge parts of this museum that I haven't even seen yet. So um, it's kind of mind boggling, but yeah, they have like I mean if you if you like ruins their their Egypt section is just amazing. I and mean, they have like a whole temple that they brought over. Wow. Um but yeah, I mean you could you could easily spend all day in there. And then another place that is part of like um if you go there, they have another one called the Oysters, which is a bit of a drive. Like you'd have to get a taxi or something to go there. Mm-hmm. But it would probably be like if you got admission to one you could go over and go into the other one, and it's, you know, probably like a 20, 25-minute drive. Um, anyway, the Cloisters is all this, like, medieval artifact mm-hmm. that they took over, and they, you know, rebuilt whole, like, you know, medieval chapels and things like that in the building. It's just beautiful. So, um, yeah, both of those are a lot of fun. Well, I'll write that down in my list of things to do when I get over there. Oh yeah, if you, I mean, if you're ever looking for suggestions, that's uh, you know, between my wife and I, like you, you know, it's a lot of fun things to do. But yeah, I mean, it's it's neat though because um, even though I would say that 
probably is the museum my favorite of them. Just every city you go to, you go to one, you find something cool that you didn't know about before. Yeah, very true. Um, is there any advice you would like to give to aspiring photographers? Hmm. I mean, I guess maybe, you know, two things. I think the first thing, um, especially if you're talking about people that are getting into photographic abandoned buildings, is just to be really careful, you know, mm-hmm. um, because there's a, there's a really good quote. No, I, I, I don't, I can't do it justice off the top of my head, but it was, um, this guy was writing about mountain climbing, and he was saying essentially that any step could be the one that changes your life forever, you know? Yeah. Um, and so in that case, I mean, I think a lot of times people maybe lose sight of the fact that if you go through a floor or something falls on you or, you know what I mean? Like there are a lot of ways to get hurt in these places that, um, yeah, I mean, you know, so that would be, that would be the, the biggest thing. But I guess the other thing was just in regard to photography. I mean, I think there are a lot of people out there that, are like how do I you know how do I make this into a, a career or something? And I think you know at the risk of sounding presumptuous, the main thing is to focus on making sure you're doing it because it's what you love. And hopefully the you know uh, making money will follow. Although there are very few photographers that I know myself included that ever like just rolling around in big deep cash or anything. You know, mm-hmm. usually being a working artist is kind of like you know, keeping your head just above the surface, uh, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but, um, but anyway, I mean, in that sense, I, you know, I would, again, I would just say to, to try and focus on the part of it that you really love and enjoy, because if it is something that you really love and enjoy and, and spend a lot of time on, you know, theoretically, it might take you a while, but hopefully it'll develop into something else. Uh-huh. Well, actually, maybe not, maybe not uh-huh. hopefully, maybe it's good right there. Uh, I'm sorry, what you, you were saying? Oh, no. Um, did you want to add anything? No, I mean, tell me, uh, if you don't mind, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, uh, what's, you know, what's your, your interest in this? How did you get interested in these places? So, um, I, like, I love, like, a like abandoned things. I follow this um, YouTuber that goes around and we either do like um, he'll go into like actual abandoned places or he does like um, history behind it. He'll do like his like a historical video on like how like when it was thriving, when that place was thriving, and then how it like got into where it's at now. So I think I've always been kind of into abandoned places, and I've always liked like the ancient Egyptians. Um, I'm a big history buff myself. Um, I could watch history documentaries all day long and I would be Me perfectly too. fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you yeah, so I mean, much you for do. taking this time to talk with me. It's been really interesting. Thanks. Um, I look forward to seeing the article. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you. you too. Bye. Bye.